six freshmen in this class. So it's one of the largest freshman classes in some time. Uh, so there's a lot of new faces in D.C. Uh, out of 435, that gives you a perspective of over 20% uh, of the Congress uh, is, is brand new in their first, first four months. Uh, we've been uh, fast at work for January, February, March, and April, uh, now through May, uh, working and debating a series of votes on the floor. I've had the uh, privilege to chair the House floor uh, many times and have the opportunity to, to run debates. If you ever turn on C-SPAN, might be on there uh, chairing the debate, chairing the floor debate. I also have the honor of being on the House Appropriations Committee. The uh, House Appropriations Committee is a 50-member committee uh, of uh, Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it is the committee that's responsible for allocating the, uh, the, the resources of the federal government that go through the appropriations process. There are just three freshmen on the committee out of, out of 50. And out of 96 freshmen, only three made on the appropriations. So I feel very blessed with the chance to be there. And I know it is all, both a blessing and a huge responsibility. Because we all know the fiscal challenges our country is facing. Uh, we all know uh, the dilemma that our country has with its national debt and deficit. And so to be part of that uh, is certainly an opportunity for uh, this district to have a voice at that table. And I believe it's the first time the 3rd District has had a member of the House Appropriations Committee. We are on uh, several social mediums. Uh, you can uh, find us. Uh, for those of you who are on Facebook or Twitter, uh, or on, uh, on Twitter, we're at Rep. Kevin Yoder, and on Facebook, at Congressman Kevin Yoder. And those are both sites in which we uh, Facebook or tweet uh, all the subs uh, substantive votes that we take on the House floor. Uh, very few congressmen do that. And it's, uh, I believe, a way in which we can be very accessible. Uh, so you can see the vote, uh, you can read the bill, you can see how everyone else voted, and get instantaneous understanding of what we're doing, uh, which is more sometimes than we get out of print media or other things to actually see the votes as they're happening in real time on the House floor. So that's a service for folks who want to uh, receive information and want to know what's happening. Uh, you can do that and you can find links readily to the bills and to the votes that happen. Uh, we also have, uh, have, we send out a weekly newsletter, and if you'd like to make sure you sign up for that before you leave, uh, it's an opportunity to get an e uh, email from us each week to kind of tell, us, tell you what's going on. Uh, we have an office in Kansas City, Kansas, the Robert Bell Courthouse, uh, if, you've, if you've ever, been, ever been up there. And then we're also opening an office in Overland Park, actually here in Johnson County. Uh, we're trying to be as uh, judicious and uh, save as much money as possible in our office salaries. Uh, because we know uh, that uh, we, we have to lead by example, uh, and so we're doing everything we can to uh, reduce those expenses, and so we don't have as many offices, we don't have as many folks as many previous administrations have had, because we want to try to save, uh, save money for taxpayers. Let me talk about a few issues uh, that, that have been going on recently, both in the news and in Washington. Uh, the first issue, really, that I think uh, that I'd like to address is related to our foreign policy. Uh, I was so proud of our country, uh, of our president, uh, of our, um, our intelligence community, and of the men and women that serve overseas with our work to finally capture Osama bin Laden and bring that uh, criminal who killed thousands of Americans, innocent Americans, in September 11th to bring him to justice. And so I want to first start by just I'm giving kudos to uh, all the men and women who serve our country, the Intelligence Committee, the President who moved forward with, those, with that policy, uh, and President Bush as well. It took 10 years, um, but it shows that the American people don't give up, that we continue to push forward, and that we are going to bring people to justice who commit crimes against the United States. And so, uh, it's a very important issue, a very important moment for our country these last few weeks. And it's been helpful in Congress because you have seen sort of a renewed patriotism. Uh, it's not probably as strong as you'd like. Congress is very divided. It's very partisan. Uh, words can be very caustic on the House floor. Uh, the debates aren't always as productive as we'd like them to be. But it is an opportunity, I think, for this country to come together on an issue uh, that uh, is very unifying. Uh, our foreign policy continues to be something of much debate in this country. Uh, obviously, we've been in Iraq and Afghanistan for a long time now. And now we've opened up a third front uh, in our war, uh, and now we're in Libya. Uh, and the question is how long that will go and what our ultimate goals are and how much that's going to cost and all that. So there's a lot of questions related to foreign policy right now, particularly as it deals with this third front and how it deals with Afghanistan and Iraq, where we still have uh, over 100,000 or more troops uh, in, in Afghanistan. And so we're in a situation where I think many of us, the folks I talk to, and I'd love to hear back from folks today, are ready to see our men and women come home. That we've been in the Middle East for a long time, uh, we are at a point where there is no way to tell when you can declare victory. And so at some point, uh, I think 
we've had men and women over there a long time. And at some point we reach the point where it's time to get our men and women back home. It's time to resolve these conflicts, get the job done, and, and finish the job. And so uh, this is uh, something that certainly both parties are talking about is trying to grab how to uh, properly resolve these conflicts to finish them off. But it's obviously an expense. Uh, it's obviously a, a human toll. And sometimes we wonder if we're actually always making progress. But the Osama bin Laden capture was a moment uh, for many of us to at least know that uh, some of the work we've done in the last 10 years has been very uh, productive in that regard. Second issue I want to talk about is uh, job creation. It's kind of our economic standing in this country. We know that the unemployment rate uh, is around 9%. Uh, it's been around 9% now, or up 9% or higher for 24 months or more. It's the longest period of unemployment this high since the Great Depression. The question is, what are the policies that we're pursuing in Washington? What have we been pursuing? What's working? What isn't working? And intelligent minds, economists, people who have uh, PhDs in economics can disagree on these points. I'm sure folks in this room will disagree. But I'll tell you some of the things that uh, I've been working on, that Congress has been working on, so that we can move forward and try to create jobs. First of all, uh, you know, the, the debate has really changed. Uh, two years ago, in the last four years, the debate in Washington was uh, the reason our economy isn't producing is because it, we let it get away, and there wasn't enough government regulation, there wasn't enough government control over the economy, and that the more we regulate, the more we control the economy, the stronger our country will be. Uh, the other side, of that, the other part of that debate was that we needed to borrow, uh, raise taxes, and borrow money in order to stimulate the economy by creating jobs through Washington programs. That debate has changed this year, and it's changed for both parties. Uh, we now see the president embracing more austerity programs, the president embracing uh, the concept that we're going to have to make some reductions in spending. Uh, clearly, the new Republican majority is pushing to reduce uh, federal spending and try to bring our budget in balance. Uh, and the debate now in Washington is how do we create jobs in the private sector that doesn't involve greater government policy or greater government spending? And so I spend a lot of my time trying to sit down with small business owners, uh, sit down with folks who uh, create jobs, who risk capital, who uh, you know, risk their business every day and when they make money, they, they, they risk a little bit more, and figure out what it is that's making it difficult for them to expand. And you hear a variety of different things. Um, one of them that I hear a lot of, uh, in many conversations, is access to capital. Uh, many small businesses would like to create jobs, but because of the current climate related to some of the regulations coming out of Washington, community bankers are not in a position where they can loan money to small business owners and to entrepreneurs. And we know that the job growth in this country will happen from entrepreneurs and from small business owners. In fact, 70% of the jobs that are created in this country are created by small business owners. 100% of the net new jobs after the last recession were created by small business owners. And so we have to figure out what it takes to help some of these folks. And so some of them have said their challenge is that they're unable to, uh, to link up with community banks. And I've, I've sat down with community bankers who also have the same frustration. Uh, they have a business that's a conservative business that they trust, that they think uh, is, a good, is a good bet to invest in. Uh, the business has a plan to be willing to expand or to hire folks or to build something, and they don't have enough equity to put into the deal. And so what happens a lot of times in Washington, and both parties do this, you find a, a problem that you want to attack, and in trying to attack that problem, you create a whole host of new problems. And so as part of the Dodd-Frank debate, as part of the uh, Wall Street meltdown, uh, we have caused what I believe to be problems, and what I hear from small businesses to be problems in the private sector with entrepreneurs as they attempt to, uh, to expand and grow their business. So that's one area we're trying to work on, is to help businesses get access to capital 